to ask, obviously, um, we're in round 19, um, 20 months of negotiation, and uh, the course of action that was taken by the Rugby League Players Association and the playing group to not have any engagement with media mm. as of Thursday through to now. Why now, and why is that the correct response? Yeah, I'm not quite sure whether the lads have got it, if you want to pass that around, just because I know I sent it to you, James, on Friday, and Gordy, I think you and James, so... Um, it's all pretty clear in our media statement, um, but for those listeners that don't have it, um, the reality is after 20 months of negotiations and protracted negotiations, obviously we put forward a settlement proposal a number of weeks ago that resulted in the NRL's response was uh, providing their response, which had over 100 changes to it. And ultimately that's, um, that's where we've got to, but it came on the back of the actions of the players came on the back of the other party refusing to negotiate, walking away and giving the players a take it or leave it. And that's really where this has come about. Clint, why are you punishing the broadcasters who tip in $2 billion into the game over the course of the next five seasons through until the end of 2027? Yeah, the intent isn't to punish broadcasters. The intent well, that's is what to you're doing. yeah. The the intent is to shine a light on the current situation in negotiation. So yes, there's going to be people that are, there's collateral damage there. Unfortunately, it's one of our major providers. But the way in which this ends, if the other party gets back to the table, that's all we're saying. It'll end at that point, you know, because the reality is, is that while ever one party in a two-person negotiation doesn't want to negotiate anymore. This will keep going on and on and on. So, Clint, well, just to clarify, it will the the stance that the players are taking at the moment that will end when the NRL come back to negotiate or when it's no. agreed. No, it'll end when the players are in a, is satisfied with the position that they're in. Now, at the moment, there's a couple of outstanding items. One, they need to get back to the table and start negotiating again. Two, there's an element around the COVID reductions and players being paid what they're owed. Um, but which you is not about paid. money. No, but that's that was in that's an entitlement that every worker in yep. this country got post COVID, where they got paid back money that they were owed. That's where it is. But that's that's a separate deal. Yep. That was based on the pre- prior yep. agreement, not this one. So there's yep. two different things. And then the last one is actually getting a long form CBA done. Our code does not have a long form CBA, unlike every other major code in this country. Haven't had it for a decade. You know, so that is critical. To ensure that every stakeholder in the game how long knows do you want exactly to go for? how long, we, how long, how long do you want the CBA to go for? Five years. Five years. So yes. is the term of the broadcast. Yes. So we're going to go through this every time. No, not every time. I'd like to think that this is this is not going to happen again. But the the reality, this one was a big negotiation. We, that's why we started it. That's why we put in the request in November in 2021, because it was the first time the women were going to have a CBA, and we didn't have a long form CBA. So there's so much more detail and complexity that exists in this deal that didn't exist before. And that's why we started it. That's why we put in the financial request in November. We didn't get them for six months, accurate information, which then led to the whole blow up around the COVID reductions and the above forecast payments, which ultimately then led to more breakdown of trust. Are you going to suggest to the players that they should strike if you can't come to some sort of agreement? Now, it's not the way our structure works. So for everyone that's listening is that I can't make a decision without the players backing the approach, right? So what we do is... Well, we what, do you the, say, what do you say to Ricky Stewart, who said on Friday that 95% of the players wouldn't even know what this boycott is about? Well, in most union-led movements in any type of strike, the, if the expectation is to have 100% of people know exactly every single item that exists in the claims... That is an unrealistic expectation. So are you a union? Are you a union or an association? We, we certainly believe in the fact that we are an association, but ultimately we act as though it's a, it's a union movement. We are part of a movement. Absolutely. This country has been built on union movements. If workers unions didn't exist, as an example, during COVID, there were most workers would have been obliterated during that period of time. The ones that had strong representation got their entitlements, got the protections they needed. And that's the job of a, of a union for our job in sport, like every other association is to protect and advance the interests of the players. But what about Clint, the interest Clint, of the fans? So I, so like then, and I get the players, I'm a player, mm-hmm. right? I'm a current player. I've walked down this road before. I've, I've been in your position or well going in and fighting um, against the NRL. Yeah. Um, I, I still that. hold that 
Craig Gower didn't get his dally, and we called yep. off a lot of things that yep. did not help. So I yeah, it did it did, Gordy. So, it, how, like, so how does it, it help, it, Craig? So how it, did it no, help the players? Yeah, but I think you 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 are not giving yourself and those players enough credit that took that action. If you remember rightly, in two thousand and three, that you yep. we were one of our leaders, right? I was two years into first grade. I didn't know everything that was going on. I trusted you. I trusted Butsy. I trusted other other leaders. I didn't know when you guys said that's what we're doing. It was all in. I relied on you telling us that. Now, hang on. Yep. Wait. So from that, Gordy, if you remember, do you remember what we were fighting for in 2003? Yeah, the same thing. What was it? For. What was it? I have no idea. Well, that's disappointing because you were part of the first yeah, ever CBA that was secured. So what was it, Clint? So minimum wage. There was no minimum wage before 2003. Mm -hmm. Clubs could just sign you on a lower contract. It didn't matter. Mm. Well-being education. It was the first time the game introduced well-being education funding, which now many players have been benefiting from. Mm -hmm. Insurances didn't exist, you know, mm. for players. Mm. The CBA didn't exist. Is the game in as good a shape as you've ever seen it, Clint? On the field, absolutely. Right. So yeah. then why are you going to war with what the administration? What about financially, Clint? Yeah. Financially, financially, surely you can see that the game is, it, it's the most money that's ever been bought in. Broadcasters are paid the most money at all. So yep. what if there's a hundred... 100 little areas that you're not happy with mm. all this is this is great but it's affecting everybody so how do you yeah. get to a result how does this stop and look the players will strike M make no mistakes about it they they will strike well they won't if get you guys paid don't get what if you it want. comes to that that means yeah. they won't get paid dobo well, well, that would mean the dobo is the process arrangements yeah, could also go up in that's a ridiculous yeah, statement. Don't and the players that, that have told you that so who's told you no 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 i'm not so, i'm saying clint no, no, you so admit told that, you that? just hang on Gordy. clint will you admit that there will be more action take place if you guys don't get an agreement yeah there will be more action of course there will be well what's the next step Get back to the table. It's pretty simple. Like, well, this isn't rocket science. Mm. These claims that we've so asked So how come for, it's taken you 20 years to get the deal? 20, so 20, 20, get, 20 years. 20 months, sorry. <laughs> it feels like 20 years. You're right. So <laughs> for us, so, too. so this is my brain, right? Yeah. And I'm a real simple guy that played mm. the game. How come you haven't been able to get the deal done? Well, I Do think, we need someone better running the Players Association? Well, again, that's up to the players to decide. If that's what they want, I, I'm happy to be cast out. Right. If that's what it takes, if that's what it is, but I would suggest there's a number of, and I'm happy to put myself between a bullet and a target, right? The target is the players. Let's make that very, very clear. The target is the players, which is an erosion of their rights, control of their association, a lack of information. So that's and what this is all about, isn't it, Clint? It's all about the fact that the Rugby League Players Association prior to COVID was yeah. being given $3 million a year by the NRL. No, no, they weren't being given by, by the NRL. The players allocate a portion from the share that they get yep. to run our association. That's been reduced to $2 million, hasn't it? Because of COVID. Yes. yes. And it hasn't gone back. No. It, 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 it since hasn't been resolved. Yeah. And you want it to go to $4 million under the new agreement. Absolutely. And that's fair. I'm completely transparent. I've got nothing to hide there. We've had an increase in player membership. So therefore the players that we have to represent by 64%. So we've picked up tw 10 women's teams. We've got another two coming in in a couple of years time. Mm. We've picked up another men's team. We're picking up a whole transition support program that we are the ones that wanting to prioritise. So yeah, you need more funds to be able to service the members, but hang on, but for us to run our business, we need to have the independence to make decisions at the discretion of the players. We are not run by the NRL. We have our own board. We are governed by a constitution and that's why it's important for the players to run their association how they choose. But back in my really day, we had to pay out of our own pocket. Yeah. And it, it's a good question. So to give everyone a history lesson, in 2012, the, the RLPA was breaking down, right? In our AGM in 2012... Well, so not every player wanted to pay. No, because what was happening was they just didn't resource properly. So therefore, if you're not resourced properly, what happens is you're not servicing the players, right? So in 2012, we all voted at our AGM that $100,000 from the salary cap that ultimately would go to players by their salaries would go to run the association. That was a huge decision that players made, which basically set the foundations that we've got now. That was 1.6 million. Then in the last CBA that we got, the NRL and wanted to restrict our ability to go into the commercial market to use player property to be able to obviously, you know, get generate sponsorship and revenues. Mm. So they bought us out of that for 1.4 mil. So on an annual basis, we were operating on three mil to service 16 teams. You know, multiplied by 35, 36. Now we've got an additional 280, 300 people 
coming in and the expectation is for us to service them on pre-COVID numbers. It's ridiculous. No, and but it's, it's going to be, they're going to reinstate it to what it was. Like the, the difference between the 3 million and the 2 million, that will be covered. Yeah, but we're servicing more people. So you James. need more money. Of so course you, need more you money. do. Look, I'm all for players, Clint, um, having a seat at the table and a Thank huge you. voice in the game. They yep. are hugely important. There is no game without the players. Thank you. But Absolutely. do you really think that it's smart business to tell 510 contracted NRL players mm. to go to war with Channel 9 and News Corp? Well, I think, again, you're not addressing the issues here. Well, no, like, we look are. At, no, you're that's not, what because, you've done. No, because that's you, the, no, that's you put no, your, you no, put that's your the, players no, that's in the this reaction. position. That's the reaction of the actions of the NRL. Let's just get back to the facts It's here. your actions as well, mate. Yeah. Uh, like, no, You're the one no who hasn't doubt. been able to get the deal done yeah, for 20 minutes. and both sides haven't got a deal done. Yep. And again, I'm happy to wear, like, take bullets, right? Mm. That's the job. Yep. I knew exactly what we were getting in for. Bias reporting, demonizing of players, personal attacks, that's all part of it. Mm. The union movement and, and representation and associations, it's all about struggle and resistance. It's all part of it. It is, for, for as long as we can remember, that's what it's about. But if you get back to the outstanding items, mm. someone will have to explain to me what is wrong with some of these items that we've got. Why is it so hard to understand that players should be afforded the same privacy laws that exist in every other workplace? Why is it so hard to understand with all of what's going on at the moment, with all the concussion, CTE, workloads, health and safety, that players don't have agreement rights over an introduction of more matches, which carries more risk? Again, these are just basic things. Mm. But if there's no more games, right, we can't expand. There's no Redcliffe's of these 30 no, no, players no, no. without a job. No, no, expansion. The, you, you can expand the They play the, the same comp- amount of games as I did in 98, no, no, but don't they? Expansion, do but they play 24 games? That's the same as when I was playing. Yeah, so I'm not. that's not in dispute. Yeah. Expansion can still happen without increasing the number of matches any one player plays in the season. And if we want to grow international game, if we want to do all that, you can't load in more regular season comps and have a great international game. The players can only play so much. And again, it would be irresponsible of the game to not reach agreement with players when it involves increasing their work obligations that carry risk. Do we all agree that football carries football? risk? Of course. Yeah, do, of course. Do we? I broke do we? my neck. You yeah. broke your neck. So yeah. if anyone should I'll be supporting the fact... Yeah, and players, the players do. But ultimately, if you are going to ask, we wanted players, to play thirty games a year. So yeah. then, well, Junior so Polo okay. played no, no, thirty-six. No, no. Just last hear year. me out. So just hear me yeah. out here. So they play twenty-four <laughs> games. Don't play finals, boys. Don't play finals. Don't play those extra four games, and they go on a tour. But that, that's, that's extra games that's than a, what the blokes that are playing. That's a straw man argument. Like what, this what's is a straw man argument. Well, you're not addressing the issue. You're basically the issue are some players got, are going to play twenty-four, and some game some players might play thirty. Then they go on a tour. They might play 34. Absolutely. So therefore, why would we want to increase the number of matches when they're already playing that amount? Are it doesn't pro- make any you, sense. The guys that play 30 don't care. They want to go play finals. Yes. They want to go do but it. But that's why we made changes, Gordy, to, to the cush- concussion policies and all those types of things. You don't get extra for playing semifinals. Let me tell you, you don't get extra for playing semifinals. You only get paid for playing your 24 games. We do with prize money. So you do get paid more. Oh, what? So the club keeps it or do the players get it? No, it's shared. Is it? Yeah, but it's not about this. Isn't about money. How do we get to a solution, no, no. Clint? That's Clint, why we Clint, haven't asked we for to... any more money since December last year. No, no because more money. it's been agreed that the players are going to be paid one point three four seven billion dollars over the course That's not of the next dispute. five years. That's not in That's dispute. awesome. The annual, the average annual wage for an mm. NRL player will be four hundred one thousand yep. dollars. Is that not a, a good of state of affairs? Yeah, fantastic. But again, you're not addressing. You are conflating. Well, I'm putting it to you, yeah, mate, because you, you you can go around in circles no, at times. I'm putting it. I'm putting. Now you're going well, but I'm putting it to you you that I think a big part of this is about power and control and also your ego. You and Andrew Abdo clearly extremely, I'll, I'll say, dislike each other. You could probably even go as far as say hate each other. No, and I think strong. that's, and I think distrust. And too I think, strong. and I think that's a, that's a big part of this beef. Yeah, totally. And that's well, sad for the game. It is. It is sad, James. And that's the point. But if you act, you shouldn't be then saying just because a player's average salary is at that rate, that fundamental rights just get removed. That, that's, that's, you're not addressing the argument. Do you agree? Do you agree that the game should comply with privacy laws that exist in this? Every other employment. Well, what do you that, explain do that, you mate? For people like Gordon and I, mate, with respect, yeah. that's not, privacy laws aren't something that we go and do yeah. a lot of homework on every day. No, you don't. So what's and they're the on issue? their phone all the yeah. time. and they. Oh, no, but that's what's, fair, the no, but that's what's the privacy problem? So basically, if you're going to collect 
player property or, you know, the way so in which you want access to the GPS data and all that well, stuff? Well, no. Yes, it's equal access to that. Of course it is because it's their property. But if you are going to store it and sell it, you need to be able to agree that with players. I've got to get another Zuckerberg and those guys that keep all my data when I get on all <laughs> yeah. I buy stuff on online shopping when because they keep my data. There's obligations, <laughs> there's obligations, James, for the game to be able to agree with players how they store it, when they delete it, how they capture it, how they sell it. You know, that's all we're asking. It's pretty basic. Mm. There's no groundbreaking stuff here. Unfortunately, there's no groundbreaking stuff. So does the NRL not 100% comply with all the privacy laws at the moment? That's what's in their agreement, yeah. They don't comply no, with No, they it. don't. How do, how do they not comply well, with just it? Just explain that. They They're not giving agreement. You the information. They will not Reet, they do not want to have agreement rights with players, which okay. are equal rights on their information. So, are so we, Clint, are we if okay they give with you that, that will, you, will you rubber stamp this CBA no, because and, and you can at, end the look war at the statement. and everybody will play Read on. the statement and look at all the outstanding things. Clint, there's a hundred things. You're not going to get all of them done. You can't there, win a hundred nil, mate. There's not, there's not going to be a hundred things. What are the, the and, and the NRL have not contacted you, am I right in saying, no. and you haven't contacted them since you made this stance on Wednesday. So... How is this going to get to a resolution that everybody can get back on and play ball? What, what has yeah. to happen? Are you prepared to pick up the phone and ring Andrew Abdo and say, let's get to a table? I know you want an um, um, independent mediator, an industrial relations mediator. Yep. Well, you've uh, already had two of those. How many do you want? No, well, one was employed. What was by, Hugh Marks and what was, he was Brett employed, He was employed by the NRL, mm. Hugh Marks. Yep. So he was their negotiator with mm. us. Yep. Hugh did a great job for a number of months and mm. then got... I don't know, got removed uh, for some reason. I don't know. I already got bored senseless. Yeah. yeah. Brett came in, did a fantastic job, mm. um, invested a tremendous amount of hours into doing this from December till now. But ultimately, we're now down to the finer points after moving a lot in the last seven months that we're just at loggerheads over. And that's okay. But ultimately, it's not going to get done while a party says, we're not coming back to the table. Can I ask, what if there's a rogue player? that really loves the game and likes the fans that just starts doing interviews? Yeah, well, again, it's the player's choice. Like, so again, players can go out there and do an interview today. So if they want and we walk up to a player walking off the field and go, get a here you well, go. I would like to think that the people are going to respect the, the way in which players have unified to a point where they're saying All players. No, because no, you just said earlier that not every player is going to be on board and you can't No, no get I everybody. didn't say not on board. I said not across all no. the detail. So when you made that stance in 2003, was I across all the detail? No, I wasn't. No, well, I wasn't. Well, maybe all the players should be. So yeah. They know what they're that's not going to be, Gordy. That's, that's what Ricky Stewart's that, that's point you, was that's last why you have a, that's 95% why, of them don't even have a yeah, clue what but, it's about. Yeah, I, I'd love to see where that stat came from. And that's it's interesting, right, that there's people in the media, um, you know, like Ricky, that are talking about these types of things that were also part of a, a massive war. Mm. By, and, and again, and, and and we all had to take the game to recover we all from know that, what happens. Again, do we all have to go back to that again, do we? No, we right. don't. But that's okay. why well, the only way in which we can do that why, is if we get back from to the experience. table. Exactly. But I'm talking from experience. Sitting out a year going through these wars, it didn't help us. The game's got did, back to where it did help us. finally Gordon. got back to where it Gordon, is. Gordon, you are underestimating your impact. I just said that stance yeah. that you took in 2003 gave our game the first ever CBA, minimum wages, wellbeing education, insurances that didn't exist. And we didn't win 100 nil then. Clint, we got three I, that, across. Clint, I appreciate you coming in. I think we all do. Um, and you answered yes. the questions. We, we obviously want to see a result. I so think do I. Everybody, Absolutely. everybody. So, so hang on, Dom, hoping... just before we let Clint go, how do we get a result then? You yeah. want an Look. independent industrial relations expert yep. to be parachuted in. Will that yeah. fix the problems? It should do, yes. How quickly? We want it done like tomorrow. Right. We are but ready because, to go. Yeah, but because you and Andrew Abdo are so off park, each other, park, that's a park yeah, the relationship. Absolutely, park the park egos, park it, it all, put, get like, it done. As we've said, James, put both proposals side by side. Look at the outstanding items, and then let's go through it. But the, if the other party are not willing to do it, this action will continue. We'll all come, and the reality is. The players shouldn't be demonised for standing up for things that every other person. No one's demonising the players. They are. You put it they in. A, you put no. in a thing that you sent to them, but no, nobody's they been are. bagging the players. No, no. They're bagging no you. Yeah, bagging exactly. Bagging the but, that's, but that's the way they go. Because why not? You're attacking well, mate, me. You're leading, and you think, you're leading the war. You're and, the one who advised them to boycott and, and strike. And I'm absolutely happy to. The players were presented with options. What, they chose what, what, what were those options, Clint? Because it, it does appear that the the direction of um, the action is disproportionately affecting the broadcasters mm. and not the people you should be going after. So how do you the, so how do you how do you go after the NRL? 
right? Well, you, because you're limited with your industrial yeah. action. You're limited with what you can do. Not so speak to NRL.com, so like exclude them, yeah, cover, the, done that cover the badge. Done that, and that didn't work. So we made progress during that period when players were threatening to stand down from trials, which ultimately they wound back mm. because players don't want to hurt the game. We are forced into a position where when party says, take it or leave it, well, thank you, but it's a leave it for now. So let's get back to the table. Let's work through it. The players, I think the way in which I'm, I'm happy to cop criticism. I'm happy to be targeted. I know what I was getting in for, mm. but I tell you what, my conviction to get the best outcome for players is unwavering. Can and if, you guarantee players won't strike? What about the best outcome for the game? Yeah. Well, that involves giving players a deal that we can all be proud of. Can you guarantee players won't strike? I'm not, I can't guarantee anything, but what mm. I can guarantee that is would be players a very sad state absolutely would. So how do we fix that? We get back to the table. So mm. why don't you... But you realise they don't get paid if they, if they strike. Yeah, but wouldn't it be a sad indictment of the game if it actually got to that? Like absolutely. the fact that we... we well, sad that it's got to this game. Yeah, exactly. sad that it's got to this so game. how do we... away from... How, no, hold on. $400,000 average, $400,000, and they walk away from the greatest game of all. Yeah, but that's... They walk away. Gordon... The only way this will get solved if it's wow. people come back to the table. You are hanging on something that is a maybe, a what if. Ultimately, again, Do you know if you, you don't you like your workplace, you can change, you know. Yeah, I think that's a simplistic way of looking at it. Well, that's, that's we're life. We're going to finish that's, up, Clint. We appreciate you coming on.